Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my mini art talks. This is number five, and I'm going to talk to you today about Edward Manet. So let me tell you a little bit about him before I put some images up for you. Um, Manet was born into a very comfortable upper middle class family. He was quite urbane and amiable. In fact, he attracted all kinds of uh, younger artists and even writers and politicians into his uh, milieu. And he even hosted a weekly get together of uh, all of these exciting, uh, interesting um, people at first the um, Café Gerbois in the Batignolles, and then at the Café Nouvelle Eton in, um, uh, also in Montmartre. Montmartre. Um, and they would get together and they would talk about art and literature and politics and sometimes these sessions got very, very heated. But one of the things they were really uh, debating and talking about was a publication by Charles Baudelaire. And we know Baudelaire mostly as a poet, but he was also a critic, an art critic. And he published a book in 1863 called The Painter of Modern Life and where he talked about a lot of things. But probably the most important was this idea that young painters in Paris had to throw off old conventions and start painting their lives, what they saw in everyday Paris, in the city, in the countryside, that these subjects were just as worthy as uh, pictures of, of popes and kings and scenes from religion and scenes from history and scenes from mythology, that painters had a responsibility to portray that what he called the heroism of modern life. And this is what all these young artists, most of whom soon became known as the Impressionists, were uh, debating. Uh, and Manet was at the center of, uh, of all of this. And uh, so therefore he's really considered completely um, uh, one of the most seminal figures in the history of modern art. Now the paintings I'm going to show you, the painting I'm going to talk about today is not this painting, Luncheon on the Grass, which is one of his most famous, and it was painted early on when he was uh, um, at the beginning of his career. And I'm also not, in 1863, and I'm also not going to talk about this painting, which was another one of his very controversial works, also painted in 1863, Olympia. Instead, I'm going to talk about a painting that he did at the end of his life, at the end of his career. And that's this painting here a bar at the Folie Bergère. It was painted in 1882 and he died the very next year in 1883 and it's at the Courtauld Institute Galleries in London and it's a wonderful uh, museum. If you've never been there before, the next time you go to London, be sure to make a trip to the Courtauld. It's, it's really wonderful. Now, um, Manet painted um, other paintings um, at the last year of his life, mostly very small, very delicate flower paintings, apropos of someone who knew he was going to leave this earth soon. Uh, but this is really his last major work of art, and so I want to talk to you about it. Now, the Folie Bergère, let me just uh, get rid of the... Um, the words. The Folie Bergère may be familiar to you. Now we know that this was a, um, a very celebrated cafe concert venue. People went there um, to, uh, to eat and drink, to be entertained, and very importantly to see and to be seen. And one of the interesting things about the Folie Bergère and other cafe concerts of the, of the era was that people from all social classes would mix there. And this was unusual because um, before that, uh, society was very, very stratified in the uh, early 19th century, and things were really changing with the Industrial Revolution. So people would go to these, these um, uh, venues, and you could uh, see and be with all kinds of different people. Now, when I said people went there to be entertained, one of the things I think you think of when you think of the Folie Bergère is the can-can that women would come out and dance this, this uh, frenzy dance. And that is very true. But in this painting, we're seeing um, uh, a different kind of entertainment, but it's very subtle. Can you see what um, Manet is showing us, what all of these people here are looking at and watching and enjoying? Well, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you so that you can see it. 
If you look up here in the upper left corner, you see the legs of a trapeze artist that in fact uh, people were watching the um, uh, an acrobat on the trapeze in this picture. But um, it's a very subtle nuance that that Manet is giving us. But let's talk a little bit more about the painting. Now he is, Manet is very interested in manipulating space. He's, he's very, very interested in that. So, so let's take a look. First of all, we, it appears, this is, this is a barmaid and we even know her name. Her name is Suzanne. And even though this painting so looks like uh, we were right there, right in the, sitting in the Folie Berger ourselves, actually he recreated um, uh, her and the bar in his, in his studio. And all of this is from his imagination. But it looks like all of these people are behind her, right? But when we look at it really, really carefully, we can see that they are not behind her at all. That what's behind her is a mirror. And all of these people who are watching the, the acrobat are actually behind us. If we're the viewer looking at this, people are actually behind us. And how do we know that? Well, take a look at what's here. This is Suzanne's back. And this is the person that she's getting ready to wait on at the bar. But Manet is just not interested in, in uh, portraying reality exactly because we are actually the customer standing in front of her about to order. And, and if that were the case, we would be obscuring her. So he's decided, well, what the heck, I'm just going to put her over here and, and put her, her customer uh, over there, even though that is not exactly where they would be. Now, another way he's manipulating the space is, is look here at, at, the, at the people. He's showing us going all the way back into perhaps the front door of the cafe or, or what have you, but we can really see into the, into the background, which is actually, of course, behind us, not in front of us. Also here, you see these bottles on the bar, and here's their, the reflection of the bar and the bottles here, and that kind of draws us into the space here, whereas these bottles over here, he doesn't show us their reflection in the mirror, so these bottles kind of draw the space forward. So he's, he's really deciding uh, that he's going to uh, break all the rules, which he did for his entire career, and uh, he certainly does that um, does that in this in this painting as well. Um, I also want to draw your attention to this beautiful um, uh, chandelier here, and it is um, painted it's so lovely. I'm going to make it bigger for you, just so that we can see. And um, this is an important um, uh, thing to put in there because. It is a symbol or a metaphor, if you will, of modern life, which is exactly what Baudelaire's uh, manifesto was telling these artists to paint. Electricity was new, replacing gaslight, and um, Manet gives us this absolutely beautiful um, uh, chandelier here. And notice the lovely, delicate brushstrokes here, and they're really echoed in the lace around her collar and her sleeves. So you have this beautiful chandelier casting all this wonderful light. And uh, uh, also you have um, uh, Suzanne as the, also the embodiment of modern life here as well. And notice the loose handling of the brushstrokes here. Very, very, um, uh, not a lot of detail, which is uh, a hallmark of Impressionism, even though Manet never considered him himself an impressionist. He certainly influenced all the impressionists. Also, I just want to point out a lot of the people that you do see here were actually portraits of people that Manet knew. Now, just to finish up, I want to talk about um, the bottles here. So maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger as well. Now, um, I've said that the uh, Folie Berger and other these other venues were places where uh, people from all uh, classes, all parts of Parisian society could mix. And in fact, that uh, Manet is giving us a very subtle uh, accounting of that by having this very expensive French champagne sitting on the bar right next to English beer. So he's showing us metaphorically uh, the mixing of the social classes. And he's also shown us his, uh, on the label of this bottle, his signature uh, and the date of the painting as well.
So Manet dies the year after this is painted, and up to the end, he's been controversial and provocative, um, and, and he's doing that with this painting as well. And when he dies in the wall of his studio, um, there uh, it is noted that he has something written on the wall and it it's almost like his um uh, uh an adage that we a moral of the story of his life if you will and he wrote be truthful and let people say what they will and i think that's a very good um thing for us to live by as well be truthful and let people say what they will so I hope you've enjoyed this talk um, on Edouard Manet's The Bar at the Folie Bergère, and that you'll come back and uh, visit me again on my YouTube channel or on my Facebook page. Thanks a lot, and um, hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>